Let's add Font Awesome version 6 icons to our next JS app the right way. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hamid. I'm a full stack JavaScript developer. And here on this channel, we talk all about JavaScript web development. Let's get into this. I've started with a blank Next.js application and I have just set it up to work with Tailwind CSS for styling if you need to. And like always, I have summarized the steps you need to take to properly include the packages that you need uh, and steps you need to take to integrate font awesome icons in your Next.js app in a single blog post on my site. I'm going to link in the description below. You can follow along with me if you want. And in this video, I'm just going to go over those same steps. So let's go. There are two methods, uh, generally speaking, to render font awesome icons in React or Next.js. Uh, the first one, or the preferred one, which we're going to talk about today is SVG plus JS method. And there is this traditional way of using uh, font awesome icons with web fonts and CSS in your app, which used to be the way that I used font awesome before, but now we're going to go over the official font awesome React component, which uses this uh, SVG plus JS method to render icons um, in our Next.js app. So, Let's get going. To set up, we need to install first uh, the two core packages. So the first one is Font Awesome SVG Core. This is going to include the utilities we need to render um, icons in our app. And then the React Font Awesome is the package we're going to use to expose that component that we can then pass the icons to. So let's go ahead and install these two. Going to copy this. Let me just stop the development server. And let's just install these packages. And restart our dev server. Or, you know what, let's wait because we have more packages to install. So add the icon packages. Now, once you've installed the core packages, um, you're going to install the actual icon packages that you want to use. If you're familiar with Font Awesome, you know that it comes with different types of icons let's say um, if you search for a search icon you could see there are different styles the light the regular the solid and uh, recently they have added the sharp kind of uh, category um, and for each one of these you need to install that specific package the solid the regular now um, Icon packages from Font Awesome come in the free version and in a pro version. The free version only includes the solid icons and the regular icons. Um, but as you saw here, there are more variations or classes or styles of icons that you need to pay to use. Uh, I'm going to show you how the paid version works, but in this example, we're going to implement the free version so everybody can can implement them in, in their application if they're not a pro member. Uh, so for the free, I'm going to just install these two um, free packages over here. So the solid icons and the regular icons. Uh, it still gives you plenty of icons to choose from. It just doesn't have the variety of the pro version. Now, for pro icons, as I explained, you need to have an active subscription and you need to have a valid token. Once you subscribe to the pro plan and got your valid token from your account, you have to then set up Font Awesome Scope uh, via the NPM registry to use that token. And the way that you do it is you either do it globally for all of your projects. So you would just run NPM config and set this Fort Awesome Registry, uh, not Font Awesome, Fort Awesome Registry to that NPM registry. And then uh, the next line, you would just add uh, to that registry your auth token, which is going to be, and then you would paste in the token that you get from your account once you subscribe to the pro version. This is to set up the token for all of the projects or globally but you can also set them up for a specific project. For that reason, you need to add a, an MPMRC file to the root of your project. 
and then add these two lines of code to that npm rc file in any project that you want to include font also which is the same thing it, it uh, points to the registry and then includes your token which is what you would copy from your account once you've configured these tokens either globally or per project you'd be then be able to install this pro packages which is the pro solid the pro regular and as you can see in addition to solid and regular we would have the light the thin the dew tone the, the solid the sharp and so forth and so on if you go ahead and try to install these packages without having a valid token and i'm going to show it, uh, i'm going to show it to you here it, it errors out because it needs a token as you can see here down in my console it does not go ahead so you need to set up your token first then you'd be able to install these packages and then the rest would be the same regardless of if you're using the pro or the free version so as i mentioned we're going to continue with the free version so everybody can follow along but for the pro th this just this step is different to um, specify your token now that we have all the packages let's just uh, restart our dev server and go about adding the react component so there are a few ways that you can add icons to your uh, react or next.js project the easiest way is to use a dynamic import which i'm going to explain uh, but you can also um, import icons individually and render them with the use of this font awesome icon so let's just start with the dynamic import now the dynamic import eliminates the need to declare icons individually you would get helper functions and then pass the name of the icons and it would automatically uh, import that specific icon and render it to your app but to make that work we need to install a Babel plugin called macros plugin so to install that we have to run Babel plugin macros so let me just install that real quickly And then we have to configure our Babel to actually use that plugin. So in order to do that, we have to create, let me just open up the files over here. So in the root uh, of your project, you would include a file called Babel, Babel RC. And inside of it, you would copy and paste these two lines. So the first line, the preset next Babel, it's just for Next.js to work because Next.js um, already behind the scene sets up Babel for you to render React and server side rendering uh, React components. So we need to include this. But then the macros plugin is what we need to add to be able to use the dynamic import for Font Awesome. Um, so that's one thing. And the second thing you need to do is to include Babel config macros config.js. This is for that plugin. So let me just create a new file again with this. And then I'm going to import this setting over here, which just says, hey, use the font awesome SVG core package and license free since we are I'm using the free version of font awesome. Okay, now with these two setup, we should be good to add um, icons dynamically to our uh, project so let's go back to a home page I'm going to close this so we have more room now the way that it works is first we would get this uh, component from the font awesome react package and then um, from this macros plugin Um, we're going to get these functions now instead of getting icons uh, how it works is um, let's say I want to render this user secret so the way that it works is that it, it exposes it these functions solid regular brands that map to the same classes that we have over here so these are the functions that you get uh, out of this core uh, via the macros plugin and then to those, you would add the name of um, the icon that you're trying to render. Let's say this is a user secret. And the name of it is just this user secret. 
So we want to add that. We would pass the name of it to the solid version. And I'm using the solid because I'm using the free version. I can only do solid or regular. Um, I don't think uh, all of the brands would be included. So we can either do this. And if I do this and go back to my homepage, you could see we should be able to see this icon rendered over there. As you can see, it showed up over there. Uh, let me just make it a, a bit bigger. I'm going to talk about a, a styling shortly, but let me just make this a bit bigger. So Font Awesome, this, um, Font Awesome in general comes with a styling toolkit that allows you to you know, style this icons. And some of these uh, functionality also applies to this uh, React component. I've included a link in, in the post. You can follow for um, you know, all the options available to you that you can kind of um, style. Uh, but before we get there, there's another way that we could have um, rendered this if we go back to the post, you can see there is this icon function. So this icon function, uh, it's a general function that you can then pass an object, specify the name of the icon you want to use and the style. So you can either get uh, the specific functions mapping to the style or, the, or, or to the package that you want to use, or just use the general icon. And this should also show that coffee. I'm going to make this also bigger. Now, this sizing, now that you're talking about it, let me just mention it. Um, you can use it with, uh, you know, um, syntax like this, small, or maybe 2XL. Or you can use it with this, uh, like 1X, um, 2X, um, 10x as a as a multiplier of of a size so uh, different ways to kind of use this sizing but we we we're we going to talk about this styling in a second so this was the first uh, way of rendering your icons that was the dynamic import for the dynamic import we needed this extra babel plugin and with that, we could just get these functions and just pass uh, the name of the icon we want to render to these functions. Now, if you don't want to install this uh, Babel plugin or use the dynamic import, what you can do is to just import that specific uh, icon that you want to use from the package. So let's say here from the solid package, I'm getting the uh, envelope icon. And I'm passing that to my font awesome without needing these functions. So let's actually do that. So um, I'm going to import this um, individually, and then I'm going to just pass it as an object to this font awesome icon. So if I go back, I see that envelope over there too. So we didn't need this dynamic import. If we don't want to, we could just individually import them. Um, one thing that's easier with the dynamic import is that you don't have to keep track of uh, the individual icons and which one is used, which one isn't. You just get these functions and dynamically import that specific icon that you want. But you can just um, choose whichever way is more convenient for you. Uh, now, for styling, as I mentioned, uh, Font Awesome has a styling toolkit, and I have included a link here uh, that talks about you know size basics, um, animations, rotations that you can do. For example, if I go back to here um, to that first icon, I can add a rotation of let's say 90 degree. And it just rotates that icon 90 degree. You can add animations like if I say bounce. Um, so it automatically adds these animations or comes with this toolkit that adds this functionality for extra styling. Uh, so you can use uh, that and read the docs for um, you know different things you can do um, with the font awesome library. Some of them are may not be applicable to the React component. Uh, some of them have may have a different syntax, but the core functionality is there. Uh, on top of that, or other than that, 
the styling toolkit, you can use CSS classes um, to then style or color these um, icons uh, with your CSS classes. In this case, I'm using Tailwind. So let's say I want to change this uh, to have a green color. I, I add a text and this envelope, if you can see it here, it's a bit small, but it's now green. That's it for me, folks. Now you can add any icons that you want to your Next.js app the right way, either dynamically import them so that it's easier and you're only downloading the icon that you want, or just as specifically or individually download the icons that you want and pass them to this font awesome icon component uh, that's exported from React font awesome package and pass it that specific icon that you wanted to render. I hope this was useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment for me and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.